Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Curious Realm continuing coverage of Texas UFO Con 2023 here in Jefferson, Texas. Our guest in this segment is Martha Hazard Decker. She is actually a police trainer. Uh, you you train people in the world of forensic investigation, things like that. And that's I one do. of the reasons I wanted to have you on. We actually met you, or my wife did rather. I was in the midst of interviews and you came up and right. were chatting up my wife at MUFON Con. Gave her your card and I was like, I know her. Like, we are connected on Facebook. Right. Um, <laughs> and tried tracking you down. We kept missing each other throughout the conference and over the last year. So I'm so glad to get you on the show in person. Um because when we had Greg Lawson on uh, at the Paranormal Convention in San Antonio uh, all of about six months ago, our big conversation with him was on forensic gathering of evidence and, and proper methods of gathering evidence in the field, whether, whether it be a UFO UAP investigation, whether it be a, a, a Bigfoot hunt um, or a paranormal investigation. Exactly. It all pretty much goes the same way mm. for all of them. And and let's uh, let's kind of start cracking that nut a little bit, Martha, because it, it can seem very daunting um, when you tell somebody like protocols. Uh, we need to follow them. <laughs> uh, right. Last year, you took the field investigator training basic course at MUFON, and since have gone through the advanced training, things like that. And right. Our conversation just a minute ago, before we started recording, was how familiar you were with all of those processes because yeah, MUFON for the better part of 50 years almost has been using a very forensic data gathering process. Absolutely. And yeah, it was everything. It, it was everything that I've done, you know, when I was in law enforcement mm. and you know, for 16 plus years with that. So I'd been doing that for a long, long time. <laughs> and, and what position did you hold in law enforcement, just so our audience is aware? Okay, I started as a, a street officer, and I retired as the assistant chief and the uh, lead detective. Yeah, and, and, and that's just it. The fact that your job was to gather and examine evidence. Right. That was, and... and learn which evidence was acceptable, which ones weren't. Um, the one thing I say on social media regularly, whenever somebody's like, look at this evidence, um, typically the first words out of my mouth are, would you like that to defend you in court? Right. <laughs> or when it's a picture, would, the same thing. How many did you take? Yeah. Because you should do a burst of three. Mm -hmm. One before, one during, yeah. one after. Yeah, always pop, pop, pop. Um, if possible, don't zoom in. Leave it wide, leave it so wide. you have a and have a frame of reference for size, like and a light pole. Don't send it to somebody to to. Uh, I, t I get this all the time when they contact me. They mm. they want to send me the picture through Facebook, and I say no, no, I can't do anything. You need to send it to my email. Yeah, yeah. And Facebook crunches everything down. It, so it, you don't see stuff. Yeah, it compresses things. I do a lot of astrophotography and. Um, my, my, my wife, whenever she wants me to share a picture, is like, don't give it to me from Facebook. For, uh, for that exact same reason. I was just having a conversation uh, before the conference started with the guys over at the MUFON table and someone else. The idea that, um, I'm sorry, folks, trail cams are great. They're awesome. Unfortunately, you are rewriting over a piece of media and rewriting over it and rewriting it, like daily rewriting over it. You will get ghost images. You will get right. corrupted data. Um, even if you format the car, that, that's how people like your forensics teams are able to go, oh, that's awesome. Let me see that SD card. And they can still pull data off they of can. it. They can. Even if you formatted it like 10 times, they can pull things off from a year ago. That's right. Um, there are all kinds of ghost images, things like that, that are inside of there that will gladly corrupt your new data. Yeah, and they'll send pictures and, and they'll crop them zoom them and it's like you know depending on what your optics are yeah yeah <laughs> it's your yeah. camera well well and even with your camera it's not like you're talking about like a glass lens you're you're talking about plastic lenses in front of things those create different aberrations they right. they react differently at temperatures than coated optical glass in exactly. an actual lens you know so i have i don't bring my camera's out very often, but I have two 60D, Canon 60Ds, because nice. I've, I've used, because I was, you know, a journalist and mm -hmm. a photographer yeah. since the 80s. Yeah. So I have that in my background, and I've always used 
use the Canon yeah. and, uh, and the lenses. I had one lens I got knocked down by a football player shooting a football game. <laughs> and, and I'm like holding the camera. <laughs> Holding Try, the camera. Trying to tumble with the camera in but the air. As a, well, he was a really big guy. I got as far as the track when he get, took me down. The closer you get, it's like, forget about the camera. Save, yeah, yeah. Save the, uh, the, the face. Yeah. And, uh, but so I went into a professional place to get it fit. Mm. It was working fine. Sure, but sure. But just to see about fixing it. And they go, mm. oh, no, let's go over here. And why don't you just buy one of these $85 plastic? And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, uh -uh. no. So yeah. I have, yeah, two two that are kind of dented, but they work great. Well, 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 and but that's just it. Hey, it's knowing your equipment and knowing the, the, the difference between a camera on a cell phone and the way, because once again, it's it's rewritable media. You know, it's it's not like it's a piece of film and a camera like it used to be. Silver right. oxide, chemicals. There's there's an actual change of physics that happens to that piece of film. Right. You know, um, what you're getting is a digital one and zero assumption of the situation that was going on. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, even though when I was looking at buying a new professional camera, because those are 16 megapixels. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, and then I realized I needed a new phone, too. Mm. And then, you know, the one I got, it's uh, like 100 some odd megapixels. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you could, you could shoot like 4K Ultra HD. But yep. yeah, unfortunately, and I, I belong to a lot of nerd groups along with paranormal groups because I'm an AV technician. Um, and yeah, the, a big argument with people is always, like, oh, how are they upscaling all of these 35 millimeter film movies to 4K? It's like, well, I don't think you know the math of 35 millimeter film. There are more pixels in a frame of 35 millimeter film than in 4K. Our technology just was never able to project those right. pixels. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I know. <laughs> we were never, the projectors in the movie theater were never able to show you the full range of what was actually captured right. by the film and by the lens. Well, so going through and recapturing that film, yes, you can digitize it and see every pixel right. and in, expand it to 4K in the and two, ultra resolution. So the two that I have, one of them I, I bought off a friend because she needed money. But <laughs> it's bought, always the best. But time. it was a six, it was a 60D just like mine. Yeah. But hers was the um, configured inside for taking, you know. Astral photography. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so, I've got yeah. two comparable cameras that one is adjusted for my astral photography. And I love taking that to, um, to paranormal places, things like that. Because, yeah, it's, yeah, it's stripped of the infrared and ultraviolet filter. It's yeah. basically looking at the world the way a parrot sees it. Um, so, yeah, so I have those, too. It's not just buying the cheap, yeah, yeah. you know, full-color thing. It was the expensive. And uh, so I have to keep different uh, yeah. straps on them so I know which is which. Which is which, yeah, because yeah. you can't tell when you're looking through the lens. Right. Um, you only tell when you see the picture, like, oh, well, that's awfully purple. Oh, darn. Uh, <laughs> this is the wrong camera body. <laughs> now, uh, when you begin an investigation, when someone first comes to you, Martha, to go forward, begin an investigation on either a property, a case, what have you. What are, what are the first steps that you begin taking? Well, I um, first we do an in-depth. I'll do a brief interview mm. on the phone, and I'm usually on the road, so I make them send me, or I require, they send me a detailed email okay. that has, you know, all the detail, uh, their full name, their full address, and of course their phone number, because I work with different people, mm. and this way I can shoot it to them. And if it if they don't do that, you know, this is just one of my requirements. And if it ends up being, you yeah. know, something that could be heavy duty, I may require them to go get a, a medical and a mental uh, evaluation. Sure. Uh, too, yeah. because when I go in for the in depth one. You know, that's for me being law enforcement, former law enforcement, I feel like I'm doing a, you know, booking them in at jail because I'm asking all the same questions. Yeah, here, here, go take this Minnesota multiphasical exam for me. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you ask all the same things because everything can affect it. 
Oh, sure, sure. And, and but but it's also the fact of you as an investigator have to be coming from a baseline exactly. of data. If you don't start every case with the same baseline. So we do that. You know, we when we go, we go, we do that in depth. And while I'm doing that, I'm uh, recording it. Uh, with Videotaping. A, video and, and just regular recorder. Mm-hmm. Doing both, and then we go do a baseline after. And I'll take camp. I'll take, you know, with a the um, EMF detector, and okay. and then with a camera, we'll take pictures, and we just get a base reading of everything. Sure. Because sometimes people lie. Oh, yeah. Sometimes they lie. They just want to be on TV. They want someone to say, "Oh yes, your place is haunted," or or whatever. Sure. You know, yeah. for for anything, and it and it applies to everything. The yeah. UFO, the Bigfoot, it's no, all no different than somebody that come that walks right into a police department and says, "I did it." Exactly. I did it. Um, and now you've rabbit holed for how long investigating whether or not this person did it, while the real person is actively getting away. Right. Um, and and yeah, unfortunately, there is that. And side conversations in the evening over drinks that's a regular conversation amongst this group the bigfoot group things right. like that 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 looky loo um mentality of yeah yeah me too um and that's not to say that uh we don't all need some love affection well, tenderness you know, in the world some understanding and empathy and that's the, one of the things when i do my presentations that and i'm, I'm doing a presentation on the subject mm. uh is because the younger generations, you know, they had the phones a lot of times glued to their hands. <laughs> and, you know, you have to put the phone down. You have to be respectful. You have to leave your opinions, which is the hardest part, outside in your yeah. vehicle. Yeah. You have to go in and do your interview and your investigations totally unbiased. Yeah. And, and That's hard. It's hard. It, it it's is not hard. easy to... To subtract oneself from the equation, Martha. Martha. It is hard, And I, th- yeah. I think that's where a lot of people get lost, period, in all of these fields, is um, that one of personification, you know? And, right. and, and, and like, I remember uh, in my abnormal psychology class when we went and spent a couple days and observed the gorillas and we were taking notes, my, my professor kept telling me, like, stop personifying, Chris. You don't know why that ape is playing with that rock. Just write down, 2.30, ape picked up a rock. Right. <laughs> don't take it any further than that, because now it's not science. You are now assuming what's it, what the motivation yeah. of picking up that rock is. And, you and, know? A, and a lot of people do that. Yeah. And they have no well, idea what that person was thinking. You know, we go in and, and, you know, you have to build a rapport with everybody. Yeah. And you have to make them feel like they can trust you so they well, can talk about something that might be embarrassing to them. Uh, oh, or, absolutely. You know, and you, you yeah. have to do that. Put your phone down. If you're going to be late, call well, them. Yeah, talking to <laughs> any experiencer, and the, the, it's a very harsh equation, but I think given your realm of experience, you may appreciate this. The, the example I give people is, Interviewing an experiencer of something like this is, is really no different than, than interviewing a rape victim. It, exactly. Uh, there, there is a point of trauma that happens that many people are able, even, even with the horrifying situation of that four-letter word, are able to process it, filter it, move forward. Some people aren't. And True. it's the same thing with any encounter with the paranormal. Some people are able to process it, Some move are. forward. Yeah, right. Some people aren't. And it, it does, like our last conversation, it can, it can go to bad places. It can lead to addiction. It can lead to all things in life. Absolutely. No, no different than that traumatic experience as a child for somebody. Well, or it, that was talking to somebody who's become a good friend of mine, mm-hmm. uh, Jane Nelm. Jane Nelms, and she has been, I can't tell you how many times she's been on ships and uh, had that pregnancy. Mm. And she's almost 80 now. Wow. She is, wow. there's a, there's supposed, somebody's supposed to be doing a documentary on her. She was president of the Dallas chapter at one point. Interesting. And uh, she's fascinating. If you just talk to her on the phone, she, you think she's a kook like a lot of people. 
you know, until you see them in Hey, person. man, if I told you my paranormal experiences, you might think I was a kook. And I just tell people no, you know, and yeah. she's, but she and her husband have wow. been doing all of this stuff for a long time. She still, ha- oh my gosh, the stuff she has that she's collected. And when she was like 19 or so, well, mm. so she's from England and her father was a futurist for the royal family. Oh, wow. And he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth at one point. Wow. So that so being in a family with a futurist, you know, yeah. father, you know, and then she ended up like she's very tall and she ended up at 18 or 19 in Africa with like a Cirque du Soleil type traveling group. Mm. And she had a Maasai uh, warrior as her bodyguard. Oh. <laughs> she, cool. You know, so just think of this 19 year old, yeah. you know, blonde, blue eyes. Yeah, you know, tall, and uh, she cont- she helped took up arms with one of the villages when they were, you know, when another you know yeah being tri- invaded yeah and wow. you know, the killing and and, wow. and everything so <laughs> man and it, it, now the, just to move the conversation back evidence things like that um, I think a big problem that we have right now, and not just within the para communities, but as a society in general, Martha, is we're all wearing it on our sleeve, man. It's 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 hard to for a lot of people to take in data and just dispassionately see it as a point of datum that they are adding to a data set. Right. Um, not something to confirm your belief. Not something to confirm your experience that you had. Right. Um, uh, which, yeah, like even as an investigator, whenever I go into things like I have had experiences, I have to leave those at the door. You do. You know, I can't, I can't you, bring that. That will utterly taint anything right. that I'm bringing it, it in. It will help you do so, uh, help build rapport with them. Yeah. And for example, this past weekend with a meteor shower, we did a sky watch. Mm. At a friend's ranch. Yeah, you were saying. And yeah, I had a few people over, and we were out there like six hours. Yeah. <laughs> seven hours. Oh, we didn't even go in. And between hot. them, <laughs> no, it was actually, <laughs> it was actually very comfortable. Oh. And we had a steady breeze. Nice. And we saw, you know, we saw, you know, lots of meteors. We saw lots of satellites because it's very dark out there. But we did see something that. We don't know what it was. We just mm. call it an anomaly. Yeah. And I haven't Properly. had time to go Properly. back and, and, and research from some other sites to see, was there a, like a stationary satellite or something? Mm. We were watching, all of us were watching, and it was every 48 to 60 seconds, you'd have a real bright burst of white light. Interesting. And, I mean, it was steady. We did this for like couple, several hours. Oh. And, we were, of course, we were out there so long that we could watch, you know, the sky. You know, what was here was over here by the time we go in. And so it was staying about the same place, but, you know, moving. Yeah. Moving. But, but even then, like you're saying, it, an anomalous object. Right. You, you didn't say we saw an alien craft. No. You didn't say we, we saw a UFO. We... We don't know what we saw. Yeah. And I need to go see, and I can go back through some and, websites. And, and that's and, just and it. Track it's, that. it's one of those, like, we, we have this want to sensationalize, to belong, like you were saying. Right. The idea of, oh, yeah, I've seen one, too. Um, and it can, be, it can be hard to, like you're saying, look at it dispassionately and just say, yep, I saw something. It was anomalous. I don't know what it was. Right. I've, I, the one thing in the sky that I've seen, I say it regularly on the show, it was a UFO. It, it wasn't a craft that I could tell. It wasn't a shape. It was an amorphous blob flying through the sky, blocking things out behind it that was right. moving and changing shape. I saw it. My buddy saw it. The autistic neighbor saw it and remembered it the next year when we saw him. Right. So... When, when the guy next door remembered it, like we'd had some drinks, things like that. It was New Year's Eve. But when we went back the next New Year's Eve to our buddy's house and he popped up over, over the fence and went, hey, guys, I hope we see something in the sky again this year. <laughs> it was like, okay, all right, we are crazy. That was there. Mm-hmm. But fully UFO, unidentified, it was an object, it was flying. I will leave it at that. I don't. 
I don't need to take it further. It's already anomalous. Let's okay. let's leave it at that and start the investigation right. there. Once you start putting things on it, like now now you're talking literally the work that Hal Putoff started remote viewing with, which is the idea that scientists, when they go home and think about their experiment, are affecting the outcome of their experiment. So when you're getting ready and packing gear for an investigation, don't have the location in your head. Don't be thinking about it. Don't be dwelling on it. Don't because you are right. actively charging that location right now. Like you're, right. you're sticking a battery in the wall and you are charging the location with your energy to find something, um, which may be affecting your actual want of experiment and right. your actual data. Right. So I met, uh, Orville and Cheryl Murphy, they own board, they own cool. board, board Camp Crystal Mine in uh, Mean, Arkansas. Mm. And their son lives in Austin. He happened to be down, and they had had the place, I think, 17 years, you know, and it's open for people. to. And, but they have one huge area where they dig that's not public. And a long time ago, they actually had this huge stage because there used to be concerts, and so the dirt is kind of elevated mm. and so their area is back there well they noticed three beams of light this is several years ago huh. uh, that were coming from up there somewhere and uh so they went out the next day and then well the one thing they realized because you just think you know it's just coming from the sky coming down or something but then they realized that it, it stopped those beams were coming out. There was something stationary they could not see. Yeah, that the beam didn't continue up the, to the yeah, sky. Yeah, so the beam wasn't going up. Oh. It was going down. And uh, they had the MUFON general, you know, wow. a neighbor called MUFON. And, uh, but they brought their star team out, too. Mm. And they pretty much concluded that the, what they think was that they may have been collecting energy from the crystals. Mm. And so the next day when they went up there to check because they've been digging they had all these metal you know tools and everything mm, out there yeah everything was metal was magnetized wow it's still wow. magnetized so that when, is remarkable you know and he was just a scientist i mean they were just born into any kind of thing and uh Man. And then they were talking about rocks falling from the sky at night well when i went there the first time i saw big bigfoot signs oh wow because I've had experience with that. And so when I went the next time, because I've stayed there uh, with, over at their house and everything, um, my question was, is it only at night? Yes. And knowing what I know, and since then they had realized the Bigfoot deal, mm. I go. Especially with rocks falling from the sky, I said, things those like are, that. Yeah, is, that's, not, that's a common. Are, yeah, not rocks falling from the sky. Yeah. And the last time I went out there, Troy Hudson was out there too, and he's over in a Oklahoma, and he does five, I think five of the tribes, uh, any of the Bigfoot, the elders mm. will call him. And I met him in law enforcement in Texas. Wow. So I've known him for a long time, but he was there, and we it's like we played with Bigfoot all night it long. Is, it is remarkable <laughs> to me. I, 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 much, much like I'm always amazed whenever I go to the remote viewing conference, the the number of people at that conference amongst any other that I go to or sponsor, the number of people with commas and letters behind their names who are physicists, psychiatrists, psychologists, and I'm, remote viewing is what they're into. Like, that's their thing. Right. Um, and, yeah, to know that the experiences that you have with Bigfoot, things like that, uh, there is such a cadre of law enforcement individuals out there that, they keep their experiences very, very quiet, Martha. They they are out all hours of the night, patrolling, sitting on the sides of highways, things like that. The the stories that some police have privately told me of things mm -hmm. that they have seen that they will not tell anybody else. Well, you know, and I had remarkable to, man. Like, you know, I had I've to, got goosebumps right now thinking about some of them. And I had to kind of keep it quiet. Because I handled most of the uh, felony handled, cases. You're handling murder and, cases. And I'm in, yeah, and I'm in East Texas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, yeah. I can see <laughs> so, the defense. I can see the defense exactly. right now just ripping you apart on the stand. Like, so, so we notice in your spare time you do Bigfoot investigations. Exactly. Um, so. so let's go over your evidentiary chain again. 
<laughs> exactly. I know. So I kept it yeah. pretty quiet. There were a few. There were a few that knew about it. Mm. And if anybody came into our department with a crazy story, I was always the one. You were the one that Martha, they sent it to. Uh, hold one on, one we got a, We got somebody <laughs> just for you. Right. Well, but but that's the thing though is that these are out there. Um, and once again, there is a great number of men and women that wear the badge that have had some very, very strange experiences, whether it's going into a property to investigate something, um, uh, you know, be it a domestic disturbance, things like that. I, I've heard so many wild stories. So many I know, wild and there's, stories. There's so I said, don't, and I tell them, don't worry about it. And it's, you know, you're not crazy. Yeah. You know, I've heard all kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like saying that I think I saw somebody at my back window. Ah, I'm not going to call the police. Really? Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I had one. <laughs> I had there a, may be a creeper walking through your neighborhood. It's like I Let had him a, know. You know, a deputy called me one night, and and I've been out since uh, out of law enforcement since 07. Mm. And I went to work for the state, and I was a child death investigator. But, oh, wow. But, uh <laughs> And then I retired. So I have over twenty, tw- over twenty years of doing crimes That's against a, and children. Uh, you yeah. know that is that is one of those things, Martha. Uh, I talk about it regularly. I was uh, once again just at the remote viewing conference, and there were a few people that, like uh, Pam Corona, um, from from Sensing Murder, mm-hmm. um, and Lynn Buchanan will talk about it regularly. How a lot of people want to learn remote viewing so that they can, you know, do psychic detective work, and it's right. one of those like, you sure? Sure, because not everybody that wears the badge can do what you did, Martha. Not everybody can walk That's in true. and see a chalk line around somebody every day. Um, and even those people go through regular therapy. Even yeah. those people go see somebody regularly because yeah. y- you see you it in your sleep. It occupies, it rents the spare space in your mind. You can't unsee what you've seen. Yeah, you know, and, I, and no different than a paranormal experience. There's a reason why somebody's life is steeled and changed. Because you can, that bell cannot be unrung. Exactly. It cannot be unrung. I know, I know. And it's, you know, I have a couple of law enforcement agencies who have contacted me. Mm. I have some cities that have contacted me uh, about, you know, a wide variety of things. Yeah, and, the, uh, the investigative work you now do. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, well, not, well, some of them with, uh, with law enforcement, they have unsolved. Sure murderers missing people Mm. so on that i've been working for years now with robbie thomas oh wow who i don't know if you know who rob okay you know who robbie is right so there's a show that we've been working or he's been working that for a long long time i get a call from robbie we were friends but i didn't really know him i get a call years ago and he goes hey you want to be on a TV show? With, with what are the, you uh, doing Saturday? With the, uh, you know, <laughs> with some Texas cases, mm. which it continues to evolve and evolve, and there's talks and there's contracts. Yeah. You know, because they'll just do contracts just to hold it so no one else. Oh gets yeah, it. so nobody else can so, take it. You so can't you, shop it now. So, but we've actually worked cases together. Wow. Uh, too, and uh, you know, because he gets calls from law enforcement, and. Uh, and then he couldn't come over here for a couple of years with the pandemic stuff mm-hmm. since he's in Canada. Yeah. But so there's several cases that we've worked on. And uh, there's one that we can't wait for them to finally seal the deal. That the first time I heard it, heard him tell me about it, I've got red flag just <laughs> just flying yeah. up all over flares not flags <laughs> you know it's like a fireworks display. you know this person did it you know wow. this is a person who did it wow and and this is one that we have worked for several years now so wow incredible well thank you so much for taking the time to hop on martha well, it's been welcome. fantastic yeah. we're getting ready to swap speakers things like yeah. that it's a great bustling crowd here it's awesome uh before we let you go let everybody know where they can go to get a hold of you where they can go to find you if they need investigation done well they things can, like that yeah they can find me either as martha hazard decker or, or martha decker and of course i'm on facebook i'm on on twitter instagram uh TikTok, all, yep. all of those uh, or you can just do a Google search and put my name in. And I've got my phone number and contact information on it, you know, yeah. pretty much everything. So Awesome. You know, and I've got books over on Amazon. So yep. Absolutely. And we'll have to have you on some time to talk about those, everything else. Yeah. Thanks you so much for taking the time while we, you yeah. were literally just walking around on the expo floor. <laughs> I <so>. was. So. <laughs>
<laughs> While you are online checking out all the amazing work of Martha Hazard Decker, folks, make sure to stop on by Curious Realm. CuriousRealm.com is our website. CuriousRealm.com forward slash story is our experiencer page. If you're an experiencer of the paranormal, uh, cryptids, if you have had a UFO encounter, if you are a UFO UAP experiencer or contactee, CuriousRealm.com forward slash story. Share your story and evidence with us. We will anonymously share your case with our investigators and try to get you some answers. Stay tuned after this commercial break. We will be right back with our continuing coverage of Texas UFO Con 2023 here in Jefferson, Texas, right after this. 